Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. I am the guest designer for the Love From Lizzie July card kit. Today I'm sharing my 10 cards using this fun beach theme kit. For my first card, I'm using a sketch from Sweet Sunday. I've always loved using card sketches, and even when they don't include measurements, I simply figure them out for A2 size cards. I love all the pink, and my favorite paper is the one with the starfish and the shells. It has a really pretty glitter effect to it. I'm going to add some dimension and it's really nice that the kit already has all these little foam squares and these are really sticky so if you make a mistake it's not coming up. I'm using a sentiment from the exclusive stamp set. The sentiment is let's celebrate. It goes perfectly with this pattern paper. All of my cards are A2 size and for a lot of them I like to leave the little extra white border. Then I stamped one of the shells from the stamp set and I colored it with Copic markers and then I'm just fussy cutting it out and then I'm going to put it right next to the sentiment. And then just to match the pattern paper, I'm adding a little bit of glitter with a Wink of Stella glitter pen. There's a really fun little sequin pack that comes with the kit. So I'm going to add a few just for that little extra bling. The kit does include several sheets of colored cardstock, but I added a few just from my stash since I love adding layers and this pink just matched so perfectly with the pretty pink polka dot paper. So I'm going to get my sequins all glued down. And then one thing I like to do is add just a little strip of some of the extra pattern paper to the inside of the card. For card number two, I really wanted to use this background stamp. I stamped it on the blush pearlescent paper. And since the ink didn't dry very quickly, I used some clear embossing powder. I decided I'm going to make a shaker card. And I don't have a lot of experience making shaker cards just because I always find them a lot of extra work, but I've always loved the finished look. Since most of this card is tan and white, I wanted to add just a little bit of color. So I'm using this light blue ribbon that comes in the kit. Now I'm going to start building the shaker component. I'm using some of the Scotch foam tape. And I want to make sure to cut it thin enough so that it won't go past my frame that I cut. And my frame, I just use two square dies and line them up. So the biggest thing is I want to make sure the foam tape touches every edge so whatever I put inside the shaker card doesn't come out. And since the foam tape isn't very thick, I'm going to add two layers. That way there's plenty of room for my shaker components to move around. I do apologize for going off screen once in a while. I'm used to filming a wider area of my workspace. But for this video, I wanted to give a little closer view of the cards. So now that I have two layers thick, I can go ahead and add some of the shaker components. One of the fun things that comes in this kit is actual sand. So I decided it'd be perfect for a shaker card. Then I added just a little bit of glitter and little sequins that I have in my stash just to add a little extra color. And then I'll put my acetate on top. And then once again, sorry for the glare, I have overhead lights that are directly over my workspace. So it does put quite a bit of glare whenever I have something shiny like the acetate. So I can add my black frame and the shaker component is done. So since I still just love using layers, I'm going to add that whole panel onto an A2 piece of black cardstock and then that'll go onto a card base. 
And then another fun component that Lizzie added to the kit are real shells. And there's little holes already drilled through them. So I took a real small piece of twine and thread three of the shells and then I'm tying it just right onto the, the blue ribbon that's on there. So I keep fussing with the ribbon trying to figure out how I want to tie it and I end up not using a bow just because it was a little too hard to tie. But I put just a little blue dot to put underneath the shell so it wouldn't shift. And then I decided to add that let's celebrate sentiment again. It just goes perfectly with the card. Now I'm on to card number three. I'm using a sketch from Reverse Confetti. I chose two of the pattern papers. One is the green wood grain, and then the other one is a little sea scene with uh, sandcastles and buckets and all the really cute critters. I'm using that thin ribbon to wrap between the two different panels. Sometimes I just like to have something between two pattern papers. It just gives it a cleaner look. Now the kit contains a whole bunch of these fun decoupage sheets. Now I've never used these before, but now I am a huge fan. These are super cute. I decided to use the one with the little frog sleeping on the beach chair. It matches the pattern paper so perfectly. Now I believe the sheets are designed to be like four, sometimes maybe even five layers thick, but I did use a little bit less so I didn't use the main out side frames. I believe this was like step number three instead. And then I cut out a circle and then just added that image to the circle die. I added some of the foam dimensional squares. That way I can pop it up on the card and it also helps hold that ribbon in place so it's not going to shift. And then I did use one of the second layers. So I'm just going to pop the little frog and the umbrella top and the sentiment. And then that just gives it a really fun look with that extra dimension. This would not be an ideal card to just put in the mail unless you're ready to pay some extra postage. All of the decoupage sheets that are in this kit have this really pretty glitter to them. And it's nice because this glitter does not come off. Now I'm going to adhere the card front to the card base. And once again, I'm going to leave just that real thin white border. It's like an eighth of an inch that goes around the card. And one thing I love to add to my cards are just a little tiny banner. The kit also comes with these fun Nouveau drops. So I decided to add just a few dots just going around the circle. Now I'm on to card number four. I'm using a sketch from Operation Right Home this time. Their sketches are nice because measurements are already included for A2 size cards. I'm using some of the pattern paper, this time with the ice cream cones, which has that really pretty glitter effect again, and then this rainbow striped paper. The yellow cardstock came in the kit and then I just added some black for my layers. This is always one of my favorite sketches because you can use two different designs and separate them by that nice thin banner in the middle. I love all this thin ribbon that comes in the kit. I think I use almost every drop of it with my 10 cards. So this time I use the orange because it goes really well with the, the design papers. So I cut some circles and I'm gonna add the dimension to the back again using the foam squares. And then I decided to use more of the decoupage images, this time the cute little mice with the ice cream cone. I'm not using all of the pieces. The full frames are kind of big, like a little bigger than an A2 size card. So I'm just using some of the smaller pieces and they just fit perfectly but I still wanna add that extra dimension. So I'm gonna add the, the foam squares again. 
this card does end up to be on a little thicker side because of all the extra dimension but I couldn't resist using all these fun decoupage images and this one matches the ice cream cone paper perfectly I love the little mouse standing on his friend trying to reach the top of the ice cream cone then I'm adding just some small black die cuts just using some liquid glue to adhere them down. And then I decided just to add a bow with a little piece of the orange ribbon. And then this card is finished. Now I'm on to card number five. I wanted to use the bubble stencil that comes in the kit, but I didn't want it to be like a real noticeable pattern. So I'm using some Nouveau embellishment mousse. The color I chose is Mother of Pearl. I'm using a foam blending tool and just working it into the paper to create this fun bubble background look. The white paper is one of the pearlescent papers that comes in the kit, so it has a really pretty shimmer. So along with this Nouveau Mousse, the whole background has just a lot of shine to it. Since I used a pretty thin layer of the mousse, it didn't take very long to dry, so now I can get started with the rest of my card. I'm using some more of the pink cardstock to layer my card. I put a thin strip across the middle so I can anchor down the ice cream cones. This die comes with the kit and it's really cute. I used some scraps of brown cardstock to cut out the cone and then for the ice cream I used some more of that pearlescent paper that comes in the kit. There's the light pink and then a blush color and the blush color looks kind of like a light brown almost like a really pale chocolate ice cream. When I cut out the chocolate ice cream, all of those little swirl pieces stayed attached, so I decided to leave them there. But I didn't want them to fall apart later on the card, so I'm just putting a little bit of score tape on the back of that chocolate ice cream. The pink ice cream, the swirls all came out when I was die cutting, and I didn't feel like trying to piece them all back together, so I just kept those with the swirls open. So I'm just going to keep using some score tape to put those together and then I'll also use just some liquid glue to attach the ice cream to the top of the cone. I love the size of the ice cream die. It's kind of perfect to put multiples on a card or you could still just add one. It doesn't overwhelm the card and it has great detail. Even the cone has the little crisscross on the bottom. Once I get all of the ice cream cones assembled, I'm going to lay them across that pink strip on the center of the card. I have five ice cream cones cut out, three in the chocolate and two in the strawberry. I left the bottom of the card blank purposely so I could add some of these thin exclusive Love From Lizzie stickers. These are like a light pink and they have a really pretty sparkle to them and they come in three different widths. So I'm going to add one of each width just to the bottom of the card. These stickers are so fun and the sheet that comes with the kit is just full so you'll be able to use them on a lot of projects. The stamp set included in the kit didn't have any ice cream sentiments but on the decoupage sheets there's quite a few sentiments so I'm going to use one of the happy birthdays from one of the sheets. Since I added some dimension to that pink strip across the center of the card, I'm going to add just a little bit to each of the ice cream cones on the top and the bottom. My kiddos just started their summer break from school last week. We have already visited one ice cream shop and I'm sure there will be many more cold treats before heading back to school in September. Western Washington generally has fairly mild summers, which is one of the reasons I love living here, but I'm sure we'll get a few hot days during the summer this year. 
The July kit also included a die to add a tiny chocolate or maybe cookie wafer to the ice cream cone, but I decided not to use it this time. I think it would have made the ice cream cones just a little too crowded since I put five of them on my card. I'm just adding the last of the ice cream cones and cutting the foam tape so it fits perfectly. Once I have all of the ice cream cones in place, I'm going to attach this happy birthday sentiment. I'll use some more of the foam adhesive just to pop it up a little bit on the bottom of the card. Once that's in place, I'm going to go ahead and adhere the whole card front to an A2 size card base. And then just one final touch, I'm adding just a few of the Nouveau drops to the side. For card number six, I'm using a sketch from MFT. The red cardstock is from the kit. It's like a nice bold red. And then I'm just adding some plain white cardstock for those little strips that go across the the top of the card. I'm using another one of the decoupage images. I love this little by the sea with the sailboat and the little dog and cat. And this time I'm actually starting with the first piece. The frame was kind of the perfect size to fit with this sketch. I'm still not going to use quite as much dimension as some of them, but I'm going to pop out all the pieces as I decide what I want to use. I'm using a piece of black cardstock to layer that image cut apart. It just adds some nice contrast. And then I'm cutting those little tabs on the sides because all of those decoupage images are perforated. I just want to give it a cleaner look. Then I decided to add just a little more color to those white strips. So I pulled out that thin yellow ribbon that's included in the kit. And I'm just going to adhere it loosely just a thin layer of ATG on the back. And then once I adhere the image to the front, it'll hold all that ribbon in place so it won't wiggle about. Before starting to add any layers to my card, I'm gonna just go ahead and put that card front onto one of the card bases. That'll also keep that ribbon in place. Since I know I'm going to be adding several layers, I'm going to keep the base of the image flat. So I'm just using some ATG to hook that down to the card. And then I'm going to start building the little scene by adding some of the foam adhesive. I end up using three layers of the decoupage images. I really love the dimensional look with all the touches of glitter. This kit has so many shimmery or glittery goodies in it. All of the cards are going to be bright and cheerful, which is just perfect for summertime. I'm adding some more of the foam adhesive squares to that final image. And then I'll just use my scissors and kind of clean up the edges. Then I was debating about adding just one more layer with the little puppy, but I decided that would be too much. I did add some more to the little bird on the top, just because it's even then with that third layer of the boat. The foam adhesive squares that come in the kit are super sticky, but it's also really easy to cut. That way you can fit it to those little tiny pieces you need to add for your decoupage images. And then last, I'm just going to add the little with love sentiment, and I'm just going to add one layer of adhesive with that one. I really love the colors on this finished card. And this image is one of my favorites from the whole kit. Now I'm on to card number seven. I'm using another Sweet Sunday sketch. And since I just love the starfish and shell paper, I'm gonna use that again, along with some more of this pink pearlescent paper. So I'm gonna follow the sketch pretty closely. 
And then that strip I'm going to add in the middle is some more of that pearlescent in the blush color. The cover stamp that is included in the kit is so lovely. I just had to use it again. This time I'm coloring it with Copic markers though. I don't do any of the fancy shading when I color. I do keep it pretty simple. I've shared recently in another video the reasoning for that and that is because I have glaucoma so whenever I do any detailed work it really adds a lot of strain to my eyes. But I still love to pull out my Copics and just do some coloring every once in a while and this cover stamp needed to be colored. Because I'm just doing some simple coloring, I did speed up this section quite a bit. I don't own all of the Copic colors that are available, so my color choices are a bit limited, but I tried my best to choose colors that really matched with that background pattern paper. Since I'm planning on cutting this image a bit smaller, I didn't worry about staying inside those outside lines at all. Even with the simple coloring, it's so fun watching the image really come to life. This stamp was designed to be never ending. Once you stamp it, you can rotate the stamp and line it up perfectly with the opposite side. That way you can easily create a full background rather than just the 4x4 image. There are just so many ways this stamp can be used. It would be easy to create a beautiful card using only the stamp set and no pattern paper. I can't wait to see how other crafters will be using it. But since I love pattern paper, I decided to use this as the image to go along with the sketch. With my limited Copic colors, the blue that I have wasn't very dark, so I did end up going over it a few times. When I'm all done coloring the image, I'm just using a white gel pen to add just some little extra details to the shells. It's amazing how much of a difference a gel pen can make on a colored image. I'm just glad I recently ordered some new white pens since my previous one dried up. I'm just doing a few last little details like all the little dots in the center of these really pretty pink starfish. I think the pink starfish are my absolute favorite. Now to go with the sketch, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out with a circle die. I'm using some of the pink cardstock again for my matted layers, and then I'm gonna cut a little banner using that same pink cardstock. I cut the banner a bit longer so that I can tuck it underneath the blush strip. Otherwise the small size would be really hard to hold on to. Now I'm just going to use my ATG to add the image to the matted layer and then some of the foam adhesive so I can pop that whole image on my card. I really like how bold this cover image is. Now I'm going to adhere the card front to the card base and then I noticed I still have the sticker on the back of my cardstock. I'm sure it doesn't matter, but I like to remove it. I stamped the happiness comes in waves sentiment, and then I cut it into a little banner that will just kind of go on the inside of the other banner. And then I'm adding a few more of those really pretty pink sparkly strips. Since I have busy pattern paper as well as that busy cover image, I think that sentiment really helped kind of balance out the whole card. But then since it just needed a little more sparkle, I used the Wink Stella glitter pen and I did it just on the starfish this time. You can never have too much sparkle, right? Since I donate a lot of my cards, I tend to usually leave off the glitter, especially any glitter that flakes off easily. So it's always fun to add some extra sparkle to cards I know I won't be donating. Now we are on to card number eight. I'm using a sketch from Sketch Saturday. And then I'm also using another one of the decoupage sheets. Since the main image is going to be way too large to fit on this sketch, I'm just using the smaller little beach house image. 
Then I'm using some craft cardstock from my stash along with that little piece of the green wood grain pattern paper. And then I love this little beach house ribbon. So I'm cutting three pieces to be those little strips in the sketch. And I'll cut little fish tails on the end of each of them. I never measure when I'm cutting my little fish tails. I just kind of go about middle of the ribbon or paper, cut a little notch, and then from each corner I cut into that notch. Since that little beach house is going to get lost with the busy ribbon, I know I'm going to need to add it to at least some cardstock just to make it pop a little more. So first I'm going to adhere this ribbon down and I'm just using some ATG. I keep lifting my card up a little just to visually see if I have it straight at all. So I went ahead and cut out a rectangle on white cardstock and then I have the little bit of craft matted layer. And then I'm going to pop that whole thing up with the adhesive foam. And then I'll just glue that little beach house down flat. I'm not going to pop that first layer at least. Now I'm going to add some dimension to one of the layers. So this is a little bench that sits in front of the beach house. And it's really fun that with that dimension, it actually looks like it's sitting a little bit in front of the house. And then one more layer with the cute little critters. And I couldn't resist adding this little crab. He's adorable. So he's just going to sit down on the lower part of the card there. And then last, I'm going to add that sentiment. And just because some of it is going to fall off of the edge of that panel, I'm adding like half strips of the dimension and then just some ATG on the other part. And then I did end up tucking that sentiment just a little bit underneath the little seagull's tail just so it wasn't sitting too high on the card. And then last, I'm just gonna add that whole card front onto a card base, and this also has that eighth of an inch border all around. And there's my card. And now I am on to card number nine. I'm using a sketch from Freshly Made Sketches this time. And then the background paper is that green pearlescent with some of that paint splatter, for the little background and then this really cute pail and shovel paper. And I'm going to make another shaker card. Since I had so much fun creating that first shaker card, I decided I'm gonna make a second one. So I'm starting out cutting all that foam adhesive and making that little frame all around the little pale paper. And I'll be making it two layers thick again just so I have enough room for all the shaker components to move around. So I'm just making sure I have a nice and snug fit with all of that ATG because I don't want any of the, the shaker components to slip out, especially with sand or anything really small. I do find it's easier to make shaker cards with like a rectangle or a square image rather than a circle just because it's a little harder to get a nice solid closed off adhesive around the circle. And you wouldn't want your card recipient to be shaking their card and all of the components falling out. Now that I have all of the foam adhesive in place, I can go ahead and add some of those shaker components. I'm going to use some more of the sand that comes in the kit. And I'm using a little bit more this time. It just goes with that pail and shovel paper in the background. But then I decided I also wanted to add a few of these little wood veneer shells that are included. They didn't stand out very much in just that wood color, so I just took a few of my Copic markers and colored them to match the paper. And then I'm just tucking them right there inside with the sand. Once those are all in place, I can go ahead and add that acetate window to the front and then push down really firm to make sure it's sealed in tightly. And then sorry again, I'm gonna get that reflection just from the plastic again from my overhead camera. Then I had that acetate was just a little too long so I trimmed off just an edge on there. 
And now I'll go ahead and attach that stitched frame to the front. Since I still had some more of the thin yellow ribbon, I'm gonna add that to the bottom of the card. Let's put a little bit of ATG on the back of that card front and then wrap it around the card twice. And then I got it a little twisted, so I just unwrapped it and then wrapped it again. And since I don't want that ribbon to move, I'm gonna go ahead and add it to a card base right away. And I use a lot of ATG. I just don't want my cards to ever fall apart, so ATG is cheap. And then I wanted to add a little sentiment, but none of them really fit. So I took the one of them from the decoupage sheet that says happy times, and the colors just match perfectly with the rest of the papers on this card. Now I'm just gonna tie a little bow on the bottom. And then I'll put a little bit of the ATG onto that sentiment. Then I debated about adding some of these little banner puff stickers that come in the kit. I thought it might be cute to put on that little corner. So I'm trying out different colors and figuring out where I might wanna put those. So I'm thinking the blue with some of the yellow, but then I ended up not liking the look of it. So I was glad they came off easily and it didn't damage any of the paper at all. And that is card number nine. For card number 10, I'm using one of my favorite sketches, Operation Ride Home sketch number 154. I tend to use this sketch quite often at the very end of my six by six paper pad tutorials. It's perfect if you just have some small scraps of pattern paper left over that you don't want to throw away because it's beautiful pattern paper. So this is a sketch that I'll use quite often. The background paper is the last of the pearlescent cardstock that comes in the kit. This one is the white. Then I'm adding some more of those really pretty border stickers that cover the kit as well. These are really fun. I'm using three of all of the same widths this time and just adding it as that bottom element of this sketch. The sparkle from these little thin stickers goes really well with this ice cream cone pattern paper. So once I have those down, I'm gonna add them to the craft cardstock. And then I cut a oval die using a little bit more of that green pearlescent paper and then I want to add this little wood embellishment with a little ice cream cone. And I'm going to put that right on top of this oval layer. The little ice cream cone had just that little dot of adhesive, but I went ahead and took that off and then I'm just using some glue instead. That way it'll be nice and flat on top of the, the oval die cut. Now I'm going to adhere that whole thing onto a card base. I decided not to add any sentiment to the front of the card, but I am gonna add just a little more sparkle using some of the lovely sequins that come in the kit. The colors in this sequin pack are just really nice and soft, and they coordinate so well with all of the papers. So there is my final card. Here is a peek again at all 10 cards I made using the Love From Lizzie July Card Kit. It really is a fun kit and just packed full of crafty goodies. I have plenty left over to make quite a few more cards. The kits do sell out quickly, so be sure to purchase yours soon. I included links to the kit as well as the Love From Lizzie monthly subscription option below if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you have a wonderful day.